Welcome to Go Mission, a monthly program on the V Generation podcast designed to highlight amazing accounts of gospel advance and equip you to join Jesus in his Go Mission. Hello, everyone. This is Mark Gilmore here for our Go Mission podcast. And I want to share something with you an incredible excitement that I have in my heart. As just two weeks out, um, I will be returning to Cameroon for a Go Mission training conference. Uh, It's been too long since I was able to get back there. We had a conference, a trip scheduled for April 2020. Of course, you know what happened just... uh, at the uh, uh, the month before, everything was canceled. And so this trip that was at that time, I have been waiting for this opportunity and so thankful that it's opened up mid-January. We'll be heading to Cameroon for a Go Mission conference January 18th through the 27th. And I'll say just more about that at the end. But really, Cameroon is where the Go Mission vision began to live. In 2013, I had the opportunity to be trekking through unreached villages out in the bush of Aquaya, Cameroon. And I entered a village on that trek called Bombay. You may hear of, I've heard of the great Indian city of Bombay, now Mumbai, one of the, and perhaps even the largest city, the conglomerate metropolitan area in the whole world, while Bombay is about the opposite. You couldn't get much smaller than Bombay. And we stayed there for one day. We preached the gospel, gave some Bibles, received a warm welcome, saw some people profess faith in Christ, and we left the next morning. And I thought in my heart, if if I don't return to this village, who ever will? The honest answer is no one. And then as I thought about missions and church planting, I thought, you know, if I were to return, and if I failed in the endeavor, who would care? The honest answer was, no one. So I got put it in my heart, I'm going to go back to this little village. If I don't, no one will. And if I fail in my endeavor, no one will really care anyway. So let's go and give it a try. And really, that was the birth of Go Mission. Just that little window of opportunity, that little faith that said, I'm going to go try. No one else will. Well, some amazing things have happened. Let me tell you a couple stories here. Um, It was a couple years later that I began to hear, actually, um, uh, my wife and I in the 2014 January returned a half a year later and we lived for two weeks We planted a church along with some national men and a team and saw God do some really special things. That was January of 2014. Well, it was about a year later, January of 2015, where I was once again trekking out in that area, and I had heard about a man named Patrick. I didn't meet him on that trek. I had just begun to hear about this man. Well, come to find out, about 11 months after we were in that village planning the church, January 2014, Patrick had a conversation with one of the men that we reached, Emmanuel, and Emmanuel led Patrick to the Lord. Now, I'd never met Patrick. He had been led to the Lord by one of the men we reached, but immediately God put in Patrick's heart to take the gospel, go back to his home, and begin to give the gospel to his family to the other houses, the families in his village, his quarter of his village. And now no one's discipled Patrick. Patrick has just simply received the gospel, and he's ready to go and share it with others. He immediately does that. He leads his wife to the Lord. He leads his children. He leads uh, he, he leads a couple, at least a dozen people to the Lord, and he begins to go door to door in his village, opening up the Bible, reading passages, teaching it as best he could. And when we arrive uh, about a half a year later, this would have been around June of 2015 now, 
We walk into the quarter where Patrick lived, and in his house, he is basically already planning a church. He has 12 people ready to be baptized. He himself has not even been baptized yet. He's got a He's got over 40 people who are meeting regularly in his home. And when we show up, we have the privilege of baptizing him. And then he, and our helping him, he baptizes the 11 people that he's led to the Lord. And he is on mission. Uh, Patrick has helped plant churches in other places. Uh, other villages. He's laid that built the foundation for a church building there in his own quarter. He has taken other believers, brought them with him along in evangelistic efforts. He's been to training sessions. And Patrick is an amazing, uh, an amazing uh, believer. Where did Patrick come from? Well, the fact is, Patrick simply came from a second generation harvest. Not a single missionary reached him, not a single outsider, trained African partner, preacher reached him. He was reached by someone who was reached by us, and that's a miracle in the harvest. Let me tell you about another um, about another person whose story is about that time. Um, my wife and I, we planted the, the church in January of 2014 as part of a team, and I returned about four months later, and I had the privilege of baptizing a lady named Immaculate. Now, Immaculate was interesting because she had uh, she had a wrap around the top of her head, and it covered an eye that had, um, frankly, that was no longer there. There was an incident in which someone had wielded a machete towards her and had hit her on the side of the head and literally had taken out her eye. Uh, She was in a hospital at that time. Uh, Someone was able to actually help fly her out to a nearby hospital for some care. And while she's in the hospital, she she hears uh, a, a rumor that some people are taking vengeance on the person who actually cut her uh, the side of her face and when she hears that she up and walks out of the hospital begins to walk would take her a couple days to get back to her village she wants to get there uh, because she's very concerned about what action would be taken against this individual you say well why would she care so much well this is why she cared she cared because this individual was her husband I know her husband very well, and her husband definitely can have an anger problem, and in an incident of anger, he had taken a machete, and he had actually swung at his wife and hurt and harmed her irreparably. But her, but this lady Immaculate was absolutely determined to protect her husband from vengeance that might harm him. It was a couple months later when I was with her, and she asked me for some advice. She said, um, she said, people are telling me that I should leave my husband. What do you think? Well, it was hard for me to discern the answer, but I asked her, do you have any children together? And she said, yes, we've got about three. We have three, I think it was. And, and I said, well, I think that we need to consider you truly married. And according to the word of God, no, you shouldn't leave your husband. She looked at me. And with all the determination of a soul that loved the word of God and loved her husband, she said, I will never leave my husband. She was going to stand against the pressure that relatives said, you should leave this man. It would hurt you in this way. She said, no, I love my husband. I know what God's will is. I will not leave him. I have, I've never sensed a lady so determined to do the will of God and love her husband. Well, I want you to know that that woman who lives out in the middle of Bush, Africa, she is one of the most godly mothers and wives I know. She is humble. I have watched her gather her children for the daily Bible teaching. I've seen the order in her home. I've seen her teaching her children to read. On a Sunday morning, she had her children, the three or four of them, up in front quoting 10 verses almost work perfect she loves her husband and guess who's the man who's the recognized leader 
of that local church in that village. It is her husband. Where did this lady come from? Where did this kind of a convert come from? She just came out of the harvest, a godly woman. Another story on a Wednesday night in June of 2015. I'm in the village of Batomo. We're waiting for people to come to hear the gospel, and that night only two people come came, Augustine and Philip, both teachers, and that night they both professed faith in Christ. Augustine was absolutely clear. The next day, he joined our team as we went from place to place, house to house, just repeatedly giving the gospel, and he heard it every time. At the end of that Thursday, he says, tomorrow morning, I want you to come to my side of the village. We call it the quarter, his quarter. He says, I'm going to gather people to here tomorrow morning. So we arrive Friday morning. That Friday morning, the school building is packed with about 100 people. We preach the gospel and nearly 60 people profess faith in Christ. Augustine had gathered them and he'd been saved only two days. Well, we baptized him that night and he was leaving town and we didn't see him for a week. And when he returned, I was in a uh, market area preaching the gospel to a group that had gathered and I see Augustine walking up. We wave at each other. I finish preaching the gospel and several men indicate that they want to receive Christ as Savior. So I asked Augustine, come on over, Augustine. Would you deal with these men? Would you review? Would you make sure it's clear with them the decision that they need to make? And I I stood outside and I watched Augustine speak with these men and it just absolutely amazed me. You could not have been more clear on the gospel, on simple faith, on the fact that baptism doesn't save you, that water doesn't wash away sin, that it's the message and it's faith in Christ. He was so clear and he'd been only saved now for just over one week and he was making the gospel that clear To this very day, Augustine continues to lead the church in that quarter, that village of Agbal. He often talks and texts me about uh, Bible study questions or Bible study resources so he can continue uh, to lead that church. And and Lord willing, I'm going to be seeing him in just a couple weeks. Uh, But people like Patrick, people like Immaculate, people like Augustine, they are miracles in the harvest when you simply say, Lord... Where can I go where no one else is willing to go? Like, if I don't go, who will care? If I don't go, who will go? And the answers are no one will care and no one will go. But if you go, look what's waiting. The harvest like Patrick, the harvest like Immaculate, the harvest like Augustine. And it is just the thrill of my heart to have these dear believers that are there continuing the work in their own quarters, in their own villages, um, and the miracles and the harvest. And uh, that's why I'm so excited to go back to Cameroon, and I'm going to be able to see a number of these folks and encourage them and equip them to continue to go to that next village till every village in that area has a church and every person hears the gospel, and eventually every one of those churches have, uh, have a pastor and there's pastors in that region. In fact, right now as I'm speaking, those people are gathering in the year end of December out there in the the forest churches, in one of the villages, even in the midst of some of the civil strife and turmoil, they're meeting together to encourage one another for a three- or four-day conference, um, and we're praying for them as the work goes forward. And now I have the privilege to go back. And would you pray? I really appreciate your prayer. Our Go Mission Conference is January 18 to the 27th. It's in an area, it's a a city called Bafusam, and these believers are gathering, and we're going to train them on this vision of going and planting churches everywhere, equipping every ordinary believer to do all the works of the Great Commission and to see God complete the Great Commission in that region. I greatly would appreciate your prayers. Obviously, you've got issues of COVID protocols and covid tests and just praying the lord keeps us all clear from all that and i've seen god doing that in my recent trips so i'm expecting him to do it again Uh, just pray that we'd be able to encourage and equip pray for health and safety and uh, that god would just uh, superintend uh, our trip in every way Um, i by the way i have some good news back from uganda uh, on our last uh, our last podcast talking about there i have already received word we're just about a month past 
the training event that we had there in Uganda, already I've heard of three new churches being planted. One of them, one man was able to baptize 15 new believers in the planting of that church. And so uh, they are on mission, growing while they're going, going while they're growing and training and obeying the Great Commission. It's such a privilege to be part of that. So uh, young people, adults listening, I just want to encourage you. Um, don't worry about whether you're going to fail or not because there's things that if you don't do them, no one will. And honestly, if you step out in gospel witness, you can't fail. God is there. The gospel's the power of God. You don't have to be the power. You don't have to be powerful. You just have to give the gospel in dependence on the Spirit of God, and He will work. So remember, the only way to stay at peace in a world of turmoil and uncertainty is to stay on mission with Jesus in his Go Mission. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the The Generation Podcast. If you're serious about living a life of total surrender and total dependence, please consider signing the The Generation Pledge. It's not a promise of perfection, but a declaration of direction. To join hundreds of others who have signed the commitment, please visit thegeneration.org slash pledge. That's T-H-E-E generation.org slash pledge.